If you master the basic cooking techniques, you can build your confidence, cooking skills, and repertoire. Cooking is so easy once you understand the basics. And there's no better teacher than legendary Michelin-starred chef Raymond Blanc. I feel like Picasso. <laughs> Not quite. He wants to share what he's learned in his professional kitchen. What is my reaction? Give flavor, color, and taste to the food. To help you achieve incredible results at home. That's kind of dish you will remember all of your life. Raymond will reveal the secrets behind the simple techniques at the heart of every dish. If you go too high, you burn it. If you go too slow, nothing happens, it goes beige, like English cuisine 40 years ago. From baking to roasting, poaching to frying, barbecuing and slow cooking. Oh la la, oh la la, and I mean oh la la. And all in his own unique way. De dormir avec toi. <laughs> Raymond Blanc taught himself to cook. Now he will teach you. What I promise to give you is a deep understanding of what's happening in your saucepan, in your oven. And these techniques will help you become a better cook. Poaching is a gentle way to cook delicate ingredients by simmering in liquid. From eggs to meat, fish to fruit. Mastering this technique will result in perfectly sumptuous food with little chance of overcooking. Poaching is the amazing transfer of flavors. There are little miracles happening here. You conserve the flavor, you enhance it, and you also keep delicate ingredients in perfect shape. The most obvious ingredient to poach, but one that can be tricky to master, is the egg. It's the perfect introduction to this technique. In this first recipe, a poached egg with a beautifully soft yolk is served on a bed of rich, stewed tomatoes, topped with crumbled bacon crisp. A single ingredient is the star of this dish, but to ensure success, freshness is required. I think it says it all, that albumin here is so old, it's completely broken, completely disintegrated through age, OK? So you try to portion it there, you hate yourself and you hate me because I've given you the recipe, okay? That's a very bad egg. This one, brilliant. You can see the egg white protein is completely wrapped around the egg yolk. That's going to poach beautifully. So, the last thing you want is to boil the water. And you've got just these bubbles here, rising very, very quietly in that beautiful pattern. One major element which is going to help the coagulation of the egg white is vinegar. Okay. A splash of vinegar helps the proteins in the egg stick together and speeds the cooking process, forming a perfectly shaped egg. A little trick as well is to, to just give a little swirl to your water to create the spiral and just slide your egg very nicely. And look how perfectly the egg white is surrounding that egg yolk. And of course, sign of a great fresh egg. Not just great cooking, but great fresh egg, mostly. And it is lovely to see. The most important thing to remember is that poaching is not boiling. If the water boils, the egg will break up and overcook. But by poaching, the soft egg yolk will be encased in the firm white pouch. Obviously, when you've got only one egg for yourself, it's fantastic, it's brilliant. Take your little cafe au lait, all is perfect, okay? But imagine if you have to cook eggs for 30 guests, or 20 guests, or even five guests. That is a bit more complicated. For batch cooking and serving the eggs together straight from the pan, this is a simple tip and a favorite in restaurants. Poach the eggs for three minutes, then plunge them into cold water to stop them cooking further. And at the last moment, when your guests are all sitting around the table, you just finish the cooking for one and a half minutes, and it will be perfect. With the eggs par-cooked, the next stage of Raymond's take on the full English. I'm going to do a very simple tomato fondue to go with that egg. I would say, guess what, if a Frenchman for his breakfast would want a bit of garlic. Not very much, just a little. It's after all, it's for breakfast, it's, <laughs> it's not for dinner, OK? So just crunch it up. Then a little bit of rosemary, tomatoes. Now, it's very, very simple. All what you have to do is to bring all these ingredients together at very, very low temperature. You don't want to fry your, your tomatoes, you just to stew them. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> How did, do, did I do that? 
voilà. Test the tomatoes. A little bit of sugar if you need to. And actually, that one doesn't need sugar at all. It's absolutely delicious as it is. To complete this hearty breakfast, thinly sliced bacon rashers are cooked and flattened in the oven. So this is my bacon. Voilà. It takes exactly eight minutes. I place it between two sheets of, of grease proof paper and then compress with two baking sheets, OK? So to create some absolutely beautiful, gorgeous, crispy, tasty piece of little piggy. Delicious and crispy. With the bacon crisped and the tomato stewed, the eggs are poached for a further one and a half minutes to reheat and finish cooking them. Let's put that out of the way. Breakfast is served. So we've got our eggs perfectly poached. Voila. What you could do as well is to make a nice crumble, basically a little piggy, piggy crumble. And it's perfect. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. For me, this dish is really show the best of poaching. Simple, but also absolutely delicious. One fresh egg and a pan of water created the centerpiece of Raymond's mouth-watering breakfast. Introduce a rich sauce as the poaching liquid and the flavors soar. The next recipe is chicken breast browned in a frying pan before being poached in a creamy white wine and mushroom sauce. It shows off the exchange of flavors between meat and sauce and also the perfect partnership of two techniques, poaching to retain tenderness, frying to add color and flavor. The dish I'm going to make is one of the great dish of the world. Simple as well, a few tricks, mind you, so you've got to go through them. Some people might want the skin on, but for poaching, I think it's better to take the skin off. The seasoned breast is browned in a burn noisette foaming butter which smells and tastes of hazelnuts. What a beautiful nose. What you want to hear is that gentle, a lovely song, delicate. So now I've got some lovely color. It's still very rare in the middle here, completely rare. It's just brown beautifully, which gives fantastic flavor to the sauce and create a fantastic exchange of flavors, of colors, but mostly flavors. That's what I'm really interested as a cook. Oh, that's perfect. Frying has beautifully browned the outside of the chicken breasts, but poaching will cook the inside. The meat will poach in a sauce using dried morel mushrooms. What I've done is to rehydrate those morels, pour warm water on it, so that will be the main carrier of flavor. The morels are important, but the one is as important. It is arbois, the vin jaune. That's home. I really want, that's my home. I'm, I get very emotional, you know. You could use sherry if you want to draw sherry, okay, in that sauce very easily. The wine forms the base of the sauce and poaching liquid. We want to boil the wine, remove the alcohol. Of course, don't boil it down to death. So that I still have nine tenths of the volume of the wine. <laughs> that is perfect. Chop button mushrooms for texture. Squeeze the water from the moral mushrooms, but preserve the juice for extra flavor in the sauce. I'm not browning my mushrooms. I'm just warming them up, and I'm converting the starch into sugar, into flavor. Add the reduced wine, morel juice, and 200 grams of double cream. Well, that's bien. It's a very rich dish, but my God, that will become your star dish for the dinner parties. It's amazing. And now we are ready for the poaching. Voila, très bien. Completely covered. The whole process takes no more than seven minutes. No boiling, no simmering. I want that chicken to cook so slowly, that wet heat to come through gently, right at the heart of my chicken. Taste your food all the time. There'll be nothing left soon. That's quite delicious, it's amazing. So temperature, just right in the middle of the, of, the, of the breast. It is 60 degrees, so it's cooked. But I want to finish off the cooking, okay, by relaxing the meat. I'm going to rest them a little bit here. 
and reduce the sauce. Very fast speed now, galloping reduction. The chicken will be served with sliced leeks. These can be prepared in advance and heated to serve or cooked at the last minute. Often, one bores the vegetables, one bores them to death, actually. We take away all their goodness, their beauty, their colors, their taste and texture, all that goes into the water. I'm going to show you a little technique which keeps everything, taste, texture, color, flavor, and nutrients. This tip is great for any vegetables that can be quickly boiled or steamed. Cut into small and even-sized pieces to aid fast cooking. Add five grams of butter and a splash of water. When heated, this will create an emulsion, a glossy blend of two liquids which don't usually mix. The water will create steam and the butter adds flavor. What is fantastic about this technique is the leeks are not boiling in plenty of water, just a tiny bit of water which will steam them and that will create an emulsion with the butter, creating a wonderful coating, giving fantastic flavors. It should take exactly three minutes. The leeks are ready just in time to serve. Let's do it. This is incredible, beautiful sauce. Wonderful smell, wonderful aromas. So fresh, so clean, so beautiful. Bon appétit. OK, so we're going to taste it. That's the best moment of the day. When you've cooked it, you've worked for it. Look what the poaching has done. It's absolutely most. Lovely. Fantastic texture with those mushrooms. Beautiful, that shows the art of poaching. That's kind of dish you will remember all of your life. Raymond uses ingredients from all over the world in his dishes. And many of the far-flung flavors come from the fragrant herbs growing in the kitchen garden at his Oxfordshire restaurant, Le Manoir. With over 100 varieties, more than 40 are micro-herbs. For me, herbs are magic. They add that little uh, <laughs> burst of flavor so you ex when you expect them the least. Bang, you know, a bit of Vietnamese mint, or a little bit of a, a slightly sour basilic, you know, uh, or a hint of Jamaican thyme inside. Wow! This idea came from America. When I first came to America, I discovered a new world of micro-herbs about 15 years ago. And actually, American grew microherbs, which are actually seedlings. That's what it is. It's much more rounded, much more gentle, childlike. So they don't overpower the dish you are creating. Of course, they look beautiful. They're very elegant, dainty. Get to know them, taste them. With a bit of soil, it's beautiful. A bit of acidity will go so well with salmon, with any fish. Here you've got the watercress, bitter. So I got the earth. So, <laughs> c'est la vie. Food is a wonderful palette okay, of flavors and colors. Like the, the pianist would have all these notes and his keys, the chef has got at his disposition this incredible palette of flavors. I want to find a peppery herb, and I've got a wonderful purple radish. It's a very interesting herb, which has got that beautiful peppery, acidic, slightly sour, sweet notes. I could become an easy vegetarian. I'm going to graze from now on. No more meat. <laughs> Back in the kitchen, herbs from the garden are used to complement Raymond's next recipe. Poached salmon rolled in a fragrant dill, served with a tangy cucumber salad and spicy cauliflower florets. This is a simple but sophisticated dish of clean, lively flavors. So many people think that poaching is really is insipid, tasteless, thin. I think the world of poaching is marvelous, completely exciting. And there's so many ways to poach. This recipe, I have here beautiful salmon. I want to too much of a sickness. I'm going to open it up, butterfly it. Well, I like that. Then season inside here. It's a slight curing process, but not very much. A bit of cayenne pepper. Then dill. And of course, there's a classical association, salmon and dill. And all what you do now is to roll it. Just tightly turn it around into a beautiful balotine. Look at that, the beautiful salmon. So now, 
We're going to wrap it up in cling film. Thank God we have it. Poaching the ballotine or salmon roll in cling film retains the neatly rolled shape and keeps the flavors locked in, but still allows the heat of the water to travel through the barrier. Use a good quality cling film because some of them are not heat resistant as well. You hold your hand still here and you just hold it. It's vital to make sure there are no air bubbles or the ballotine will float in the poaching water and not cook evenly. Voila. Obviously, the fish is delicate, so you want a delicate cooking method because those proteins are not like meat. Meat are much more dense, there's fibers inside, there's collagens. Here, 55 degrees maximum. Beyond that, it's overcooked, and then you've got a very dry fish. Poaching off direct heat will prevent the salmon overcooking. Simply remove the simmering water from the stove, drop the ballotines in, and poach for around seven minutes. First, you can see a change of color. Remember, the fastest transfer of heat is done with liquid, not with dry heat. Dry heat stays outside. It takes a long time to come into the meat or the fish. Here, the water carries the heat much more efficiently. How do I know that my ballotine is perfectly cooked? I have no idea. But that little piece of equipment will help me a lot okay, to understand what's happening inside that ballotine. I'm going to check the temperature. I've got about 40 degrees now, OK? So of course, it's not cooked. But if I rest my ballotine, in one minute, it will be about 55 degrees. Look, it is now 54.8. Now we have a perfectly cooked salmon. And then throw it back into ice water to stop the cooking. I'm going to do two little garnishes for that dish, two wonderful textures. One cucumber, lovely little texture. And the other one, cauliflower with horseradish sauce, raw florets. We've got some horseradish cream here. All we done is about that. Oh, a bit more water. So then you can either use a bit of yogurt, but as a Frenchman, I cannot help using creme fraiche. It is so delicious. <laughs> That's what life is worth while living, you know. <laughs> food, glorious food. Oh. Madame, do you want a little bit? <laughs> oh, good. Now Adam is health conscious. He's coming at the edge where he's getting a little belly. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> well, lovely Adam. Now we'll see if I poach my fish well. Beautiful. Look at that. The middle is barely cooked. Just right. Don't forget to remove the cling film. That's one of the major complaints in the restaurants. The best way, actually, is to take the, the point of your knife, just slide it out. I just discovered that for myself. The dish is topped with micro herbs from the garden, zingy sorrel, and that peppery purple radish. Oh, look at that, Adam, look. Oh, the best part. Adam, shall we have a little bit of a little lunch here? Come on. It's good. Look. Look at that. Shiny, barely cooked. You can see it. I know I with a great dish here. What is really missing is a nice glass of Sauvignon Blanc and a French Sauvignon Blanc, not of from Sauvignon Not yet, anyway. All right. Can you get me one? No. <laughs> Garden herbs added the finishing touches to the salmon, but in this next recipe, they're used in abundance to infuse the poaching water to add extra bursts of flavor. Poached peach in an aromatic infusion of citrus fruit and liquor served on an icy bed of peach granita. When you take this beautiful peach, completely perfectly ripe, if you apply a too strong heat, you will murder it, you will kill it. But the gentle poaching will create all sorts of fantastic miracles. First, the poaching liquid. One. So I want just to boil it a little bit, that's all, to remove the top acidity and top alcohol. Yeah, about that. To the boiled wine, add the same amount of water. So, your beautiful peaches. I'm going to remove the top here. It's like a little cork here, that's a stalk. 
But I up I pop the cork out, then I know when my peaches are ready, some beautiful little bubbles will come out. So very gently, delicately. Oh la la. Then I'm going to put my vanilla, back no more than that. I've got my herbs here, I'm going to put a bit of basilic, a bit of mint. Oranges, lemons and sugar are also added to create a sweet perfumed liquor which will infuse the peaches as they simmer. Poaching never means boring. If you boil, you destroy. Boiling is aggressive. It transfers it too fast. It overcooks the outside. All these flavors are extracted too fast. Poaching is the best vehicle to pass on flavors across from the herb to the lemon, the lemon to the orange, the orange to the peach, the peach to the wine, and they all love each other to create something which is just divine. A cartouche or paper lid will keep the peaches submerged in the heady liquid. So how you do your cartouche, very, very simple. Greaseproof paper, fold it, fold it again. Cut here, the little hole here. Raymond the Saint, the holy Raymond. So just place it, voila, and everything can start infusing. Leave the peaches to poach for 20 minutes. Let's see what's happening with my peaches. Oh, it's lovely. It is such a beautiful picture. You can see now the bubbles are rising from the center. The hair is pushing the bubble outside of the kernel. That means it's cooked. Cool and peel the peaches. The poaching liquor is simply frozen to create a sweet scented granita. It's fantastic. Very fresh, very keen. It's just melting flake of peach juice. So now, of course, comes the moment that the cook loves, okay, when you actually finish your dish and you're about to give it to your guests. So just with the lemon, to hold your granita. Lemon will be absolutely delicious to it as well. So, yeah. so then you have your granita. Oh, it's fantastic. I just feel like pouring champagne all over. Okay, then you have your beautiful peach, perfectly ripe on the top of it. A little bit of mint in sugar, that's for freshness. Voila. This is, to me, it encapsulates all the treasures of poaching. The heat is slowly, slowly cooks this beautiful, tender, ripe fruit, creating this fantastic exchange of flavor. Slow, 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 no aggression whatsoever. And everything is mingled, passed on. Lots of extraordinary flavors, minty, citrusy, peachy, bitter wine. Perfect. Bon appétit. demonstrated with the delicate peach, the art of poaching can give the lightest of touches to fragile ingredients. But in this last recipe, poaching is promoted to another level when teamed with the more robust technique of boiling. A clever pairing of ravioli filled with an elegant poached lobster and scallop mousse, served with a light tomato and lobster bisque. In my mind, I think this dish represents the ultimate of poaching. So now I'm going to make my lobster and scallop mousse. Lobster tail and scallops will be pureed to form the filling of the ravioli parcels. First, what Adam has done, thank you Adam, is to freeze my bowl. Warmth is the enemy of any mousses. Okay. And I want to pure it completely. And the best way to see it, you take your finger, you take your glasses. Where are my glasses? Always use my glasses. OK, now, ah, oh, it's perfect. And then you watch. Voila, look, it shines. All the proteins of the fish and the lobster are clinging together. The more taste you as well, because you don't need eggs, because they cling together. Why to add eggs? I want flavor. Nothing goes to waste. For even more flavor and color, the deep red pigment is scraped from the inside of the lobster shell to enrich the pale mousse. So add your cream, little by little, not too much. 
If you add two bites at a time, you will whip the cream. OK, now I'm going to color the pigmentation of the lobster. Yes, 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 yes. Look at that. It is so beautiful, so coral pink. The remaining lobster tail meat is roughly chopped to give texture to the smooth mousse. And just a quick mix is ready. That's it. The mousse will be encased in fresh pasta to create spectacular ravioli parcels. The rolled pasta can be made up to two days in advance. And I'm going to stretch my pasta so it's thin, very, very thin. It's horrible to see this very thick pasta. Okay, and it's not very nice texture either. But a very, very, very thin pasta. You need to see through it. So that's the base. Place a spoonful of mousse in the middle of the pasta and cover with another square. Gently seal the edges and trim away the excess. Voila. The ravioli goes into the freezer for 20 minutes. The frozen shell will protect the mousse when the pasta is cooked. The ravioli will be served with a lobster bisque. Its base is a rich tomato sauce with white wine added. The same tomato fondue that I did for the poached egg, exactly the same. Then I boil my water. The lobster shells are fried off to extract their natural oils, which will intensify the flavor of the beast. Voila, so it well. Don't boil it. When you boil it, everything gets confused. Okay, just slow infusion of flavors, a nice gentle simmer, that's perfect. And 15, 20 minutes, no more. Voila. So, you strain it all in here. And now we've got that beautiful jus. And I want a jus, I don't want a sauce, I want something light, I want something spicy, fresh, tangy, and we're ready to poach. Fresh from the freezer, the ravioli is boiled quickly. This will cook the pasta shell, but only defrost the delicate mousse filling. With the pasta cooked, the boiling water is turned down to a simmer to poach the lobster and scallop mousse inside. No boil whatsoever now. We poach them just delicately, one tiny little bubble coming up every so often. It's so delicate, a hard boil will kill it. What you want to have at the end is a mousse melting, perfectly cooked, melting, no firmness, just completely dissolving in your mouth like snow. So, I have you here ready. I'm going to leave them out. They are gorgeous. Poached ravioli sits on a bed of heated courgette and carrot ribbons and wilted spinach. Beautiful here. Well, yeah. A lobster claw tops this striking dish, which is surrounded by the silken lobster bisque. Look at this color. Look at those flavors. So light. And the final touch from Raymond's Kitchen Garden. A little bit of micro coriander here. Looks so delicate. Let's have a look right inside the mousse, what's happening here, OK? Look at that. The beautiful little holes here. Very light mousse. This dish really shows off the beauty of poaching, what it can do. And there's nothing insipid about it, I can show you. There's so much flavor here. That's a miracle of poaching. Mm -hmm.